दिस वीडियो इज क्रिएटेड बाय जागृत क्रिएशन इट इज ऑन अंडर राइटिंग ऑफ शेयर एंड डिबेंचर्स आई विश टू सॉल्व वन सम ऑन अंडर राइटिंग ऑब्जर्व द सम विच आई इंटेंड टू सॉल्व This is a sum which I want to consider. Janta Limited issued forty thousand shares, which were underwritten as P is an underwriter who has taken the responsibility of twenty four thousand shares. Q has underwritten ten thousand shares. R has underwritten six thousand shares. Twenty four plus ten plus six that works out to be. Forty thousand. So this is not a case of partial underwriting. The underwriters made an application for the firm underwriting as under. So P committed to purchase three thousand two hundred shares firm. So even if the issue is oversubscribed, P is going to purchase this many shares. Similarly, Q has committed to purchase twelve hundred shares and R has committed to purchase four thousand shares. they are known as firm shares these shares are going to be allotted to this underwriters whether the issue is fully subscribed or over subscribed or even under subscribed in all the cases they are entitled to have these shares and they have to have these shares the total subscription excluding firm underwriting including marked applications were 20000 shares so 40000 shares were issued to the public applications received 20000 shares including mark but excluding firm underwriting the marked applications of p 4000 shares q 8000 shares and r 2000 shares marked applications means application received by the company because of the efforts of a particular underwriter so p p's efforts are apparent evident on the application form because on this application on fourth on this 4000 application form the marking stamping of p is found so it is an application which is received by the company at the instance of p so it is a marked application because of the efforts of p similarly for q and r prepare a statement showing the net liability of the underwriter so we are required to find out issue is under subscribed so underwriters have to purchase the shares what is the amount of shares what is the number of shares each underwriter is supposed to purchase that we are required to calculate the important point that i wanted to explain you in this sum is that from the total liability or total responsibility or the gross liability that they have undertaken from that you have to deduct the marked applications because they are the applications received by the company because of their efforts the unmarked application also can be distributed in the proportion of gross liability that's fine but the question is whether this firm application should be treated as marked application or should the should this this firm application be treated as unmarked application that point is not clear in this sum so i am going to solve this sum in two ways where in firm application are treated as treated as marked application or the other way to say the same thing the credit given to the underwriter for his firm applications the alternatively the firm application the i am going to solve this sum in the second presumption that firm applications are treated as unmarked application or the credit to individual underwriter is not given for the firm application but the firm application will be treated as unmarked application and gets distributed amongst underwriters in the proportion of gross liability so i am going to solve this sum in two ways wherein firm application treated as marked application firm application treated as unmarked application let me start here we are going to prepare a statement 
to determine the underwriter's liability, firm underwriting shares are treated as unmarked application. When the firm application are treated as unmarked application, they will be distributed in the proportion of gross liability. So total of all firm application, all firm application total will be made and that will be distributed in the proportion of gross liability. That is the peculiarity. Let us start with the sum. Total 40,000 shares. Commitment of P is 24,000 shares. Q 10,000 shares. R 6,000 shares. This is the gross liability. From this, you are required to deduct the marked applications. Marked applications for P is 4,000, Q 8,000, R 2,000. So, total 14,000. Now, 24,000 minus 4,000, 20,000, 2,000, 4,000. This works out to be 26,000. Total. Now, how much are the unmarked application? The total application received are 20,000, which includes marked application. So, deduct marked application from this total applications. P 4,000, 8,000. So, total marked applications are 14,000. Unmarked application 6,000. Unmarked applications are distributed in the proportion of gross liability that is 24, 24 is to 10 is to 6. So, 6000 applications distributed in the ratio of 24 is to 10 is to 6, reduce it, 12 is to 5 is to 3. So, 6000 into 12 by 20. Share of P in our unmarked application 3600. Share of Q in our non unmarked application 6000 into 4 by 20. And that of R 6000 into 3 by 20. This is the share of P, Q, and R in an unmarked application. Unmarked applications are the application on which there is no marking of any underwriter, but the applications are received straight by the company from the public because of the reputation of the company and such unmarked application which are not identified as the application received because of the specific efforts of any underwriter so they are general in nature and they are required to be distributed or normally equitably that has to be distributed between underwriters in the proportion of the gross liability if anything otherwise is not agreed. So, unmarked application credit is given. Now, out of 40,000, 20,000 applications received are already distributed, marked as per the marking, unmarked in proportion of gross liability. This is a liability that can arise. Now, what about firm? The firm applications are Three thousand two hundred, twelve hundred for Q, four thousand four hundred. These are the total form application. So these are eight thousand four hundred. They are treated as unmarked application, as if these applications are received by the company because of its reputation. Now it is treated as unmarked. So when it is treated as unmarked, this eight thousand four hundred should be distributed amongst underwriters in the proportion of gross liability that is 24, 24 is to 10 is to 6. So 8400 distributed in the ratio of 12 is to 5 is to 3 that is reduction of this 24 is to 10 is to 6 reduced to 12 is to 5 is to 3. So 8400 distributed in the ratio of 12 is to 5 is to 3 share of P, share of Q, share of R. So, P is given a credit of 5040 shares, though his firm applications were 3200. So, he has committed to purchase 3200 shares, but he got the credit of 5040 because his proportion in gross liability is highest. So, this is the liability. 
to which you are required to add form because to which you are required to add the form but because before before that this minus 600 that is a surplus of q will be transferred to p and r in the ratio of 24 is to 6 so here 500 was the requirement for q but he got a share of 2100 in firm so he has got a surplus application to his credit 1600 that surplus will be transferred to the underwriters who holds the deficit so it will be distributed in the ratio of 24 is to 6 so 1600 distributed in the ratio of 24 is to 6 that is 12 is to 3 so surplus allocated to P and surplus allocated to R 320 so here you get the net liability to this net liability you are required to add firm 3200 firm Q 1200 4000 so here you will get the total liability of P, Q and R so this is the answer wherein firm underwriting is treated as unmarked applications now I would like to solve the same sum once again where firm application will be considered at par will be considered like to marked application so straight way the firm application will be given credit to the individual underwriter now let me start in that way <coughs> alternative answer Statement of underwriter's liability, firm underwriting, shares are treated as marked application. First of all, let me write down the gross liability. Marked applications are required to be deducted exactly as you have done before. Unmarked applications are also required to be recorded in the same way as you have recorded before. There is no change. Up to, up to this stage, there is no change in both the methods. The moment the firm application comes, the credit is given straight. While here in this case, the firm applications were treated as unmarked and distributed in the proportion of gross liability. Here the firm applications are treated as marked. So treated as marked. So give straight away credit 3200, 1200 and 4000. See, what was the credit 5040? Here it is 3200. It was 2100, it is 1200, 1 to 6 euro. Here is the difference between the two methods. So firm applications are treated as marked. The negative is to be transferred. These are the surplus of Q. This is the surplus of R. Surplus of Q and R will be transferred to P. So plus 700 and 900. So this is how surplus is transferred to P. So net liability 11,600 plus you are required to add the firm shares 3,200, 1,200 and 4,000. So this is how the total liability is being worked out for this sum. Here there is a difference in liability because we have differently treated firm application. Firm application treated as unmarked then this is the liability. Firm application treated as marked this is the liability. Now in this sum you are not told what to do with firm, firm application. So this sum is solved by me in both the methods in examination. If you are given specific instruction as to how the firm application be treated or you have to infer from the language of the sum whether the firm is treated as marked or unmarked that you have to interpret from the language of the sum. And in light of that, you should solve the sum. But suppose that if you are unable to interpret an examination, then solve the sum by the method that you adopted and write a note for that. That's an advice to you. So this is how this sum gets solved. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all.